Cogsucket, Samayak, loved ones. I'm Z from 1123 Ministries, where we level up everyone we serve spiritually and financially. It's Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. I bless you in Yeshua's name. At sundown in America today is when Sukkot starts, and it is the last of the fall feast. So three feasts over three weeks in this fall feast season and another opportunity to get close to the Lord, to receive revelation from the Lord, and of course to bring the Lord offerings and sacrifices so that he can take care of you until the next set of feasts, which are in the spring. Listen, loved ones, the Lord set all of this up for you to win. He set this up for you to have a perfect provision, fullness of provision, all coming from him, not coming from anybody else. Yes, there are methods and means and ways that are used through the earth, but the provision comes from him. He's the source. And if you learn about his calendar and get involved in his calendar, you're going to see how he will take care of you because that's what his calendar is all about. It's about you getting so close to him, allowing him to be what he wants to be, who he wants to be in your life. And he wants to be a loving father that lavishes all good things on his kids all throughout the year. Lord, we just thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you for the season. We thank you and praise you for Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for Jesus. He was the word who made flesh who came and dwelt among us. And we look forward to him uh, fulfilling Sukkot once and for all in the coming days. Hallelujah and amen. We're going to go to the word. We've already read this um, in Leviticus uh, a few weeks before, but now we're going to read it again because we're in this season. I always like to remind you, I stick to God's calendar uh, because his calendar has blessings built into it. So let me explain it to you just in case you're coming across this for the first time. So the Lord has this calendar and with his calendar, he has these what are called Moedim. They're appointed times. They are things that are supposed to happen every year forever. There's no mention in the written word that these things in matter of fact, it literally says these are my appointed times in perpetuity. You're supposed to honor them, pay attention to them forever. The extent that you pay attention to them is up to you and God. But then that's how everything is with them because it's a personal relationship. You don't have to do anything anybody else is doing. But when I was coming out of poverty, the Lord told me if you really want to come into provision, and I wanted provision. I didn't want, uh, you know, just being able to get a replacement job when I got laid out from being a teacher. I wanted provision. Provision is I'm being provided for, right? And so I uh, got involved in God's calendar and I see how he provides. So he's got these uh, feast seasons and appointed times and he has specific requirements for them and offerings are made to him. And then he gives you back, of course, beyond anything that you could think, hope or imagine. So seven feasts, three different sections of the year. There's the spring feast, the summer feast, and then the fall feast. And the Lord asks for offerings during uh, different days during these feasts. And what he does is he gives you back provision for the season. So in the spring, you're supposed to bring him at least two offerings, right? One for um, the feast of, um, of Matzot and then for Passover. So you bring him at least those two offerings and he says, okay, it's my responsibility because you, you know, you did what I invited you to do. It's my responsibility to make sure that you have all the provision that you need until the summer harvest, which is Pentecost. Then at Pentecost, again, you bring him a couple offerings and then he says, okay, because you did what I asked you to do, what I invited you to do. It's now my responsibility to take care of you all through the summer and to get you ready for fall for the fall feast. So you could take three weeks off and come and hang out with me as much as you want to and party. You fast a little bit, and but you mostly party during the three weeks of the fall feast. And he's like, it's my responsibility. If you bring me these offerings during the fall feast, it's my responsibility to take care of you all the way until the next Passover, which is in the spring. Do you understand that? God's calendar has blessings built into it because it's a sowing and reaping calendar. It's a giving to him. It's a sacrificing to him calendar. He says, you bring me these offerings, I'm taking care of you for a season. You bring me another offering, I'm taking care of you to the next season. You bring me another offering, I'm taking care of you to the next season. And the Lord understands this. And listen, during these feast times, you had to go up to Jerusalem to celebrate these feasts. So people would be coming from all over the nation to Jerusalem to celebrate these feasts. You would have to take two weeks off, three weeks off, four weeks off, six weeks off to travel all the way up to Jerusalem and then travel back. 
Well, who was providing for your family? Who was providing for your livelihood during that time when you're not working, while you're traveling to go honor the Lord for these feasts? He was taking care of you. That's why you got to understand this. The Lord has your provision already laid out before your spirit is dropped into this earth. You better learn and recognize what he has for you and start living that way. It, you will stop toiling. Let me tell you, you will stop toiling if you get in the habit of sowing and reaping and honoring the Lord the way he intends for you to. So that's why I follow the Lord's calendar. Because if I can be taken care of for seasons based on two or three offerings, yeah, I'm going to do that, right? That's better than a job. That makes him responsible for me. That's what the covenant is, right? Whatever my weakness is, he covers it. That's what covenant does. And he and I are in covenant. It's his responsibility to take care of me because I bring him those sacrifices accordingly. And then, of course, the Lord has each month, same thing. Bring me a seed at the beginning of each of my months, and I'm responsible for taking care of you that entire month, right? You, you can't get any better than that. You, you, I mean, there are some jobs out there that pay enough or some gigs out there, some businesses where people can go, they work, you know, the first two or three days of a month and then they're off the rest of the month because they've brought in enough money. You need to get to that place, saints. It's available for you. Ask the Lord and follow his instructions, right? So that's a good deal to me. If I can work a little bit, and still get everything I need and want, I'm going that route. If I can sow seed and work a little bit and still have everything I need and want, I'm going that route, right? There's no reason for you to be out there toiling, saints. Seed time and harvest, that's God's way. That's his financial system. So let's go ahead and look at the word. We're going to read Leviticus 23. And yes, we read this every time we go over suck it, but I'm giving you the revelation that you need, the information that you need, so that if you want to, do more with the Lord during his feasts, then this will help you out. And this is a place for you to start. All right. So we are talking about Sukkot or tabernacles. All right. So it reads here. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to the children of Israel saying on the 15th day of this seventh new moon is the festival of Sukkot for seven days to Yehovah. On the first day is a set apart gathering. You do no servile work. So see this, the Lord saying, come have a feast, get together with all your friends and eat big. Don't go to work. That's good stuff, right? You can still be provided for partying with the Lord. Whereas, you know, most of the time you can't do that and, and get paid for it at a job. Most of the time they're like, you do that on your own time. You don't do that on my time. But the Lord's like, you can come and celebrate with me and all this stuff. And I'm still going to take care of you. Verse 37. These are the appointed times of Yehovah, which you proclaim as set apart gatherings to bring an offering made by fire to Yehovah, an ascending offering and a grain offering, a slaughtering and a drink offering as commanded for every day, besides the Sabbaths of Yehovah and besides your gifts and besides all your vows and besides all your voluntary offerings, which you give to Yehovah. On the 15th day of the seventh new moon, when you gather in the fruit of the land, celebrate the festival of Yehovah for seven days. On the first day is a rest, and on the eighth day is a rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of good trees, branches of palm trees, twigs of leafy trees, and willows of the stream, and shall rejoice before Yehovah your Elohim for seven days. So basically, you're celebrating for seven days, you're having a good time, you're eating, you're feasting, and you're also setting time away to be with the Lord, to receive revelation from him, right? That's the most important thing about this season. He's saying, bring me offerings, hang out with me. Let me talk to you. Let me tell you what I have coming up. Let me show you the things that are to come. That's one of the things that Holy Spirit does for us. He shows us things that are to come. He shows us things that Jesus wants to give us, things that Jesus has planned to give us. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get a picture of your destiny. For you to get a picture of where you are on your personal timeline and get yourself on the right spot, right? There's a perfect opportunity to do that. The Lord's saying, set yourself away from me, all right? And you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yehovah for seven days in a year, a law forever in your generation. Celebrate it in the seventh new moon. Dwell in shelters for seven days. All who are native born in Israel dwell in shelters so that your generations know that I made the children of Israel dwell in shelters when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yehovah, your Elohim. Thus did Moshe speak of the appointed times of Yehovah to the children of Israel. And again, that is Leviticus 23, starting in verse 34 and finishing at verse 44. And then, of course, we know if you go over to Yohanan 1 
and read about Jesus and he's talking about in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God and then he says the word became flesh and dwelt among us that's Jesus he fulfilled tabernacles in that instance but there's still a final fulfilling of tabernacles and that is his second coming his millennial reign where you get to live with him you get to dwell with him and he's your light he's your revelation all of that for 1,000 years and um you know, sometimes you might be, well, if he already fulfilled, you know, Passover by being sacrificed and res being resurrected and all that stuff, you know, he was the Lamb of God slain to take away the sins of the world. And he fulfilled Yom Kippur because he was the, the, the lot fell on him, you know, Baraba was let go. And uh, he was that one that was there for the removal for the Azazel. And then, um, um, Pentecost, of course, was when the giving of the Holy Spirit. But what you have to understand is that you know he hasn't completely and fin finally fulfilled tabernacles because that is a dwelling that does not end, right? Holy Spirit was given at Pentecost. He never goes away. He's always with us forever, right? So that doesn't need to be done again, right? We get some refreshing and things like that. And we're saying, you know, we're getting a feeling of the Pentecost, of the Holy Spirit being delivered, Holy Spirit falling on us. You know, I mean, it's what people, most people call revival. It's when Holy Spirit is falling on us. He is available, you know, showing up again, but um, he's not going to do that big one again where those gifts were first released. Now we're in that portion where we have Holy Spirit, he's with us, that thing is done, right? That thing is done in the tabernacles in Sukkot in Jesus dwelling it's not done he still has that second coming where he dwells with us forever that's why we know it still needs to be fulfilled and that's one of those things that you want to look at regarding the end times think about it so Jesus fulfilled Passover he was on the earth at that time had that experience right and it was done there's no more sacrificing that needs to be done for the lord the only kind of sacrifice that you give her sacrifice of praise you might give him an offering you give him um you know your your body a living sacrifice those types of things but as for the sin of the world that stuff is done it doesn't have to be done again he completely fulfilled passover he completely fulfilled pentecost when he gave us holy spirit permanently forever we have that power make sure you're taking advantage of it, make sure that you're using it in full, make sure that you don't go a day without connecting with Holy Spirit and allowing him to manifest through you, all right? It's really important. You will never be able to walk in your authority. You won't have the miracle signs and wonders, all of the stuff. You'll be missing out so many things if you won't allow Holy Spirit to be who he is. And this 5785 is all about him, right? It's about you allowing him to be who he is through you. This is about him breathing on you so that you can do what Jesus did on this earth and greater, right? So really, really give yourself over to Holy Spirit and let him just, let him be free, right? Let him be free, let him be free. So we still know that, um, yes, Jesus is in our hearts, but as far as dwelling with him, being able to touch him, see him, sit down and eat with him in the physical, all of that stuff, you know, we can do those things in the spirit, but in the physical, that is going to happen at the second coming thousand year reign, right? So then he will fulfill um, tabernacles once and for all, will not need to be fulfilled again, all right? And, um, you know, people get thinking about end times, all the stuff, and say, Jesus, come back any day now, any day now. Well, if Sukkot is the last of the feast that needs to be fulfilled once and for all, you know, in finality, then it makes sense that he's going to come back, you know, somewhere within that three week period. And then you have to understand because the way the lunar calendar goes, those three weeks are never the same time. Because like usually um, I schedule the Supernatural U conference on the third weekend of October because usually God's feasts are done by this time and I have all my revelation. So I have some of the revelation that I'm going to be delivering on the 19th at the conference. But um, Sukkot doesn't end until next week, next Tuesday. So I'm going to have, you know, more days even after the conference to be getting more revelation for this upcoming year and beyond. Right? 
so it's going to be an exciting time but yeah so a lot of times in america what people have done if they don't actually build a structure and some people do they build a structure in their backyards some people just put a tent up which is fine you know the lord's not picky or anything like that some people put a tent in the living room in the basement something like that you don't even have to do it outside because some places it's cold and whatnot right now so they don't want to be outside uh doing that type of thing living in a tent but um you know talk to the lord about it and and if you're interested in celebrating his feast honoring his feast do it to the extent that you and he are comfortable right like i don't build a specific structure or anything like that but i spend more time you know in my prayer closet and not just out doing other things during this three weeks so that I can get as much revelation as I can so that I can make sure I see what's in my Psalm 139 16 book so that I can see where I'm at in the Lamb's book of life and you know just giving revelation and during the Lord's feast you have to understand the Lord is very very easy to access very very easy to access you can get so much revelation during his feast times they're his appointed times where he promises to meet with you when you offer him up a sacrifice. And then you may be saying, oh, well, I don't have really anything to sacrifice to the Lord. You, if you don't normally set aside seven days in a row to go and meet with the Lord at the same time in the same place, but you do it during the feast season, that's a sacrifice. He will honor that, appreciate that, and he will load you up with revelation as a blessing in exchange, you know, to let you know that he receives that sacrifice that you're making. So you and the Lord get together, spend some time with him and receive some revelation that you've never received before. Receive some understanding that you've never received before. If you don't regularly have heavenly visitations, this is a perfect opportunity for you to get them, to start experiencing them. If you don't normally see angels, this is a perfect opportunity for you to begin seeing angels. You know, if you don't... Um, if you're not familiar with looking into your Psalm 139, 16 book, perfect opportunity for you to begin doing that, right? This is a time when revelation is available to you because the Lord wants to make sure that you have it, right? And it's one thing, you know, to be celebrating Christmas and all that stuff, but this is one of the Lord's set of point times where he wants to give you something specific. So take advantage of that right a lot of times we go to him because we want something well this is a time when he wants something so give him that time well, at least i think it's worth it right anytime you move toward the lord man you're, you're gonna get loaded down with blessing because he's a blessing god all right loved ones we're going to take communion so go ahead and grab your elements Lisa made um, this really beautiful anointing oil for 57.85 too. It's called the King's Proxy and it's got flowers in it and it smells beautiful and it looks beautiful. And so I'm really excited to um, give that out to those of you who will be at the conference. All right, let's go ahead and lift up your elements. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you so much for this opportunity to spend time with you. We thank you for the prayer closet, Lord. We thank you that we are the tabernacle, the dwelling of Holy Spirit. And we say, have your way, have your way, be who you want to be, do what you want to do. I want to hear your voice behind me saying, this is the way, walk in it. I want you to be as wild as you want to be. I want you to fulfill my destiny right along with me in concert with me. Lord, you are my destiny partner and I honor you and I love you and I praise you for that. And I decree in Jesus' name that the dwelling of the Lord is always 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 in us and has authority and it has the right and it has dominion to take us into the fullness of our destiny i declare this all by faith in jesus and seal it by holy spirit go ahead and take your elements and i'll be right back with you it's time to register for supernatural u 5785 saturday october 19th 2024 in faith valley tucson arizona come receive the word of the lord for the year pay hey the year of Ruach's breath. This year, three seers will teach you to live with Holy Spirit's voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Register now at www.1123.life. Hi, this is Zari. If you've enjoyed supping on the Word of God with me today, I invite you to partner with me in this kingdom work. Your partnership in this fertile soil gives you legal access to every anointing my ministry operates in, multiply because that's my decree for you thank you and be exceedingly blessed in jesus name. welcome back loved ones if you're bringing tithes trade seeds or um sacrifice offerings for 5785 to the lord we thank you we appreciate you we honor you we bless you it is such a wonderful thing to be able to 
fulfill our destiny on the earth and to have you partnering with us to bring the kingdom of God into manifestation here. You know, it's really important that the full gospel go forth so that we can begin doing those things that Jesus is always talking about, you know, amazing things. Jesus is always saying, well, he told us last year, you know, change all the games. And so I'm constantly looking for ways to do that and constantly doing things differently so that we can walk into the fullness of what all is available for us. You know, when you go spend time in heaven and you come back down here, we, you just see that we're living so much lower than what's available to us and we don't want that we want you moving in authority matter of fact the lord uh pushed us into dominion when um, we did that 12 weeks uh i'm sorry four weeks of holy ghost prayer sessions he literally moved us into dominion he was like you're going to start dominating now in everything and so you need to level up so that you can start dominating everything jesus dominated everything that he did his destiny his environment all of that and you need to do the exact same thing so that you can walk in the victory that he walked in and represent him well on this earth all right represent him well on the earth all right, loved ones, I bless you in Yeshua's name. I'm so excited to see you all Saturday. We won't be here for five o'clock service because we'll be at the conference. And um, I just want to remind you that we love you. We appreciate you. Prayer requests, you can send them to 1123 at gmail.com or put them right there on the website. Same with praise reports. You can email them or put them right there on the website. Sign up for text messages if you have it. And... Um, I've got a ton of testimonies I'm going to share at the conference. I hope you're going to be there so that you can receive. I've been uh, getting some good words from the Lord, and it's an exciting season. It really is an exciting season. And, of course, your life can change. You can come into breakthrough. You can come into deliverance the moment you make up your mind and get ready and then move out in faith and receive it. All right? All right, loved ones, I bless you in Yeshua's name. And remember, you have what you say, so call it how you want it.